This is the Oxbeam AR820 switch panel. It's the ultimate solution to cleaning up and organizing your wiring for off-road lights and other auxiliary electrical items, like a CB radio. It's a fuse block and a switch panel combined. They communicate with each other, making controlling all your accessories much simpler than wiring and switching each accessory individually. It allows you to switch eight different items all from one switch panel and comes with all the necessary hardware to mount and wire it to your vehicle's power system. I'll demonstrate every step of installing this all the way down to actually connecting a pair of lights. Not only does a fuse box clean up your wiring, but it also provides protection to your vehicle's electrical system. By fusing every single accessory that you power, you don't run the risk of short circuiting. All the OEM wiring on your car is fused and your accessory wiring job should be fused as well. This kit provides a large fuse between the battery and the control box, but it also provides individual fuses for every part of the kit. Start with connecting the provided mounting bracket somewhere in your engine bay. The closer to the battery, the better. I'll be using a rib nut gun and nut certs to attach mine. This is better than using sheet metal screws in my opinion. The machine screws are provided by Oxbeam, but the rivet gun and rib nuts I purchased separately. If you want links to the supplemental tools in this video, please check out the links below. The fuse box connects to the bracket perfectly. Mind your clearances between the fuse box and your hood and other items in your engine bay. Also keep in mind which way you want your power wires to face. They can only come out from the panel in one direction. You can flip the panel 180 degrees, so you basically have two options for pointing the wires. The kit recommends grounding the panel to the battery, but any unpainted metal should work. I'm mounting so far away from the battery that I need to upgrade to a longer power wire and make my own connection. Now, I have aftermarket battery terminals. If you don't have these, I highly recommend them. It's way cleaner and less sketchy than adding everything on directly to the battery connection at the terminal. This one has mounts, which allows me to keep my winch wiring and my switch panel wiring separate. This one is made by SDHQ, which supports mainly Toyota models. I'm running wire as far away from the engine as I can to keep things tidy and to be easier on the wire. Zip ties go a long way in cleaning this up. The power wire first goes to a standalone fuse, then another wire connects the fuse to the control box. The fuse works really well, and I ended up mounting it lower than this to avoid contacting the hood strut. There's also a plastic cover that helps protect the fuse. Now we also need to connect the control box to the switch panel, which will live inside the truck. I'm opting to go through the firewall. I'm going to use plastic wire loom and a grommet to help seal this hole. It's a pretty good fit. If you're finding this video helpful, please give this video a like to let me know you found it valuable. Also, if you're interested in buying the switch panel or the lights, check out the link in the description. Now we have to hook up the switch panel. This add a fuse tap is intended to go somewhere in the engine bay, but I actually had an easier time running it with the wire that goes to the switch panel and tapping into a fuse on the interior fuse panel. The add a fuse may seem unnecessary, but it's what provides for power distribution control within the control box in the engine bay, while the large wire that goes to the battery is what actually powers all your accessories. And the other wire that we ran through the firewall communicates with the switch panel to control which block, which terminal on the fuse box receives power. You need both fuses in the add a fuse, both the fuse you pulled to make it fit, as well as the one that Oxbeam provides for the system to work. Test the fuse to make sure it's an accessory fuse so that the switch panel will work when you turn your key to the accessory position before you even start the car, but not necessarily something that turns on even with no key in the ignition. I tapped into my gauge cluster fuse, which worked perfectly. Mounting hardware for the switch panel is also provided and easy to work with. I mounted it somewhere discreet, but still within reach. After connecting everything at the switch panel side, I started connecting things at the fuse block side. With everything connected, you can now go ahead and install a pair of lights. I've got some 5 inch V series ox beam lights here to connect. The main light is a combination flood and spot pattern, while it also includes some side shooters 
to give you light off to the sides of your vehicle. I use an 18 volt battery to quickly power them to double check that I understand how the DRL lights and main lights are wired. I'm going to use some nylite bar clamps in order to hang these lights from my bumper. And at this point I'm going to chop up the harness that comes with these lights to salvage some of the wire. The wiring that comes with these lights is sufficient to power and switch the lights by itself, but of course I want to run them through the fuse block and my switch panel that I just installed. I run the wiring from the lights under the grill and into the engine bay. There's lots of room once I get behind the bumper. For simplicity, I combine the DRL power wires from each individual light, turning it into one wire that I can run into the engine bay. But I can keep the main power and ground wires separate. Again, test the circuit. Protect everything with wire loom between the light and the fuse block. The fuse block provides the power and ground terminals, so I don't have to find a place in the engine bay to ground the wires. This makes the wiring much cleaner and simpler. I'll connect both lights to the same power and ground terminal labeled Terminal 1. This corresponds to the switch labeled 1 on the switch panel. Looks like it's working. For the DRL wire, I'm going to tap into the small wire that runs between the control box and the fuse tab. Since it's just a tiny DRL, I'm not worried about the power draw. This does mean the amber DRL will always turn on whenever the vehicle is on or the key is in the accessory position. If that would be a problem for you, you can simply run the power wire for the DRL into another terminal on your fuse block and switch it there. That way you can turn it off or on whenever you like. A quick soldering job is probably the most appropriate attachment method. Again, test your circuit. If you're happy with all your connections and you've picked the right spot on the fuse box, it's time to label your switch panel with the provided stickers. If you want to control your switch and your lights remotely or adjust any settings, you can use the app to connect to the switch panel and permanently change the colors and other settings. The app changes colors and brightness of the panel as well as allowing you to turn on the lights remotely. You can make them pulse or just do a regular toggle on off. To recap, here's a brief summary of the install. You're going to mount the panel, provide power from the battery to the fuse block, then connect the fuse block to an accessory power source, the easiest option of which is the provided fuse tap. Then connect the switch to the fuse panel and add your lights. It's really as simple as that. If you have any issues, double check your connections as well as the instructions that come with the kit. They're quite helpful and easy to understand. So just how good are these lights that I've installed? Well, if you want to find out, you'll have to wait till my next video where I compare these Oxbeam lights to several other competitors in the same price range, including Baja Designs. But until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.